Hey, do you guys see Dave around? What? Oh. Whitey went through there? Alright. Thanks. Hey, you guys see Whitey around? Alright, thanks. There's Whitey. I was looking for you. Ah, see that? It works. It all starts with an air compressor. You don't need one this big. There's a 5.5 horsepower, 25 gallon. Regulator set to 40 PSI. Line going around the room and through the wall. And back to the other side. Now I ran it to the middle of the door and added a T. And then it's very important that you use the same amount of hose from the T to each side of the door. I'll talk more about this later. So from the T, I have this line coming over to the regulator, which is also set to 40 PSI. I have it running into the solenoid, which is all ports blocked. I will talk about that later. Then from the solenoid, you run a line to each side of the cylinder. If I wanted to move the door and close it, or send it that way, I would want to make the solenoid push air into this side of the valve, of the cylinder, sorry, and release air on this side. Here's an example of both. Please pause the video so you could see the difference in the operation of the valve. So this is what you call an all ports block valve. The reason why it's called that, because if you take notice to the center position, A, B, R, P, and S, the air cannot go anywhere. This is by design. There's no air coming in and there's no air being released. It's just being held there. So that's the reason why I chose this valve. So if the power were to get shut down or whatever, this, the door would just stop. So I wanted to talk about the T and the reason why I mentioned about having the hose the same size going to both solenoids. The reason being for that is because if you don't do that, one of your doors is going to be quicker than the other. So you want to have the, the same amount of air going to both sides at the same time. That's why I put the T right in the middle and then I did the same amount of line to both sides. It will make your life easier if you do that. I also wanted to talk about the cushions. The cushions are very important. If you don't use the cushions and you're looking for speed, you could like, destroy your cylinders, you could destroy your doors. It'll just kind of help you as it's like right at the end of stroke when it's about to finish closing or finish opening it'll help it from not slamming so it's very important for what you're looking for here is the simple schematic used if you do not have a smart system in your house you could probably use this instead but for the video i'll be using my circuit now to control this guy you need to control these coils and the only thing I have with that is, let me turn off this light. This guy here is the power. This powers everything up. This is my 12 volt power. And when you see that that turns on, this little green, when I turn it off, the green light shuts off. So that's pretty much giving me the 12 volt power for the coils now if you see the 12 volt power is running through through this relay and the relay is controlled by this guy up here the smart switch 
So this smart switch, the only thing it's doing is saying, hey, turn on that relay or not turn on that relay. What I mean by that is when I give power, five volts power to my smart switch, it'll turn on this relay. As you can see, the lights turn on. If I turn that smart switch off, it turns off the relay. So when I turn that relay on, what's that? what that is doing is turning on this relay and then it is opening up the doors. You could see that that light is lit on that coil. So when I turn this smart switch off, you will see that this light turns off and that light turns on. So let's see it. So when I turn that guy off, this relay turned off, which means that this coil turned on and that one turned off. So now when I turn the smart switch on again, this relay will, will turn on and it will swap the power will swap to this coil. Here we go. Okay. Uh, I will put up a schematic on the wiring of this relay and the smart switches. It's pretty simple. I threw it together in like five minutes in a pinch. Um, and the only thing I really have different is that I have two motion sensors on each side of the door and that's to pick up anybody so if any of those get picked up it will turn on the 5 volt smart switch then after if, if they're out of the area uh, out of the motion sensors range for, for I think it's a minute or so 60 seconds this smart switch will turn back off again and then the doors will close now on my door controller you see that I had a, a open close button and a lock button I'll put up a picture of that right here so I could so you know what I, you can remember what I was talking about but when I have that locked when I push that lock button either if the door is open or closed what I'm doing is I'm killing the 12 volt power for the solenoids. That means even if somebody walks in front of the, the motion sensor, that smart switch will turn on, this relay will turn on, but there's no power to make the relays work. Or, sorry, the coils work. So let's say I'm, I go over there and I now I unlock the door controller. It's just like turning this guy on right here. And now I'm giving power, the 12 volt power, back to the coil, but it's going through the relay into the coil. Okay? So now... Now when I kill the 5 volt power again, it will close the door. So, the important part that I mentioned about having the, the correct amount of hose and everything, that's only if you're going to use two doors uh, and two cylinders. Well, actually, whichever, not two doors, I guess you could call it two doors, but two cylinders, if you have two, two coming together like that, you're going to need two of everything, pretty much. So, two cylinders, two cylinders, two reducers, two solenoids. Um, that's pretty much it. And if you're only going to do one door, you only need one cylinder, a reducer. Um, solenoid and your controls and stuff. Now I'm going to close the door. Closes. Open. So when I
pick this guy up, it's releasing from the other side. So now if I go to pick this guy up, I should hear it coming from this side. Yeah. Now if I do this one. You could lock these open and close if you wanted to. But it's basically for troubleshooting purposes. Um, I had this for, I don't know, about a year so far. And I haven't had any problems other than I had to change the relay once. These things, and it happens with even industrial relays where um, th there's little contacts in there that open and close. So when you make that relay, it, it makes an electrical connection. So over time, as you're open and closing, you're making that little electrical connection, it gets dirty. And it won't get the electrical connection uh, after a certain amount of time. So I was having problems with the door not opening on me. I'm like, what is going on with this thing? So then I figured it out. I came over here and I whacked it with a screwdriver or something because it wouldn't open for me. So I just went, yep, that's what it was. I have not tried to take it apart to see if I could clean it, but at work we do have some some old ones where we you can actually snap off uh, the top you, you could take the cover off and actually clean the contacts inside but these are so cheap it's not even worth it um, I tend to use these jumpers a lot uh, they fit perfectly on on the wires there so, so these are quick fittings. So I'm just going to push down. And there. Comes right off. And then to put it back on. All I'm going to do is. Push it back in. Push it in as far as you can. Now as far as the wiring. You can't really mess that up either. Because. Let's say it's going the wrong way. Well, all you need to do is just swap these guys out. And I'll show you how easy it is to do that. There's just a little screw on here. A little nut actually, a thumb nut. And I could just take this guy off and I could flop it over to the other one if it was reversed. It's as easy as that. So as far as wiring, you just need to take, take this apart here and take that screw off and this, and this cap will come off. Then you need to be able to put your wires in through and tie them in. Uh, there's two spots in there to tie them into. So then to put it back on, just put that guy that way, and you are done. Just make sure you use the correct voltage that are on the coils, and you're ready to rock. On the tops of these cylinders here, there is a... Um, Let's see, you could increase or decrease the speed. There's a little like lock nut there, but on top of the lock nut is just uh, a little thumb screw that you could take in and out to actually slow, slow the doors down if you want, or make them faster, depending on what you like. But you're gonna have to play with them to make sure that, well, not make sure, but you're gonna have to play with them to get them to close at the at the same time and open at the same time as far as speed. Like you, you're gonna have to play no matter what you do. So then when you find the correct position, you, you lock it down with the with the lock nut. And you do that all by hand. Yeah, if you have any if you have any questions, let me know.